Good morning, fellow YouTubers. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, you know, the perception of Metro Cruisers, I think it's a good thing that they've really come a long way and people are much um, more accepting and tolerant. Um, so most of you guys that have followed me know that like the first, uh, first like almost 20 years of my riding was um, in line four cylinder Japanese bikes, all sport bikes. And then 99 and 2000, I didn't have a motorcycle beginning of 2000. And then come 2000, kind of um, separated from my wife we had a child and she had a she was pregnant with a second child so she's not coming home anymore I'm at home alone and I was always supposed to be a family man so I'm I'm down in the dumps watching TV one night and Easy Rider came on it was the perfect little fantasy for me to get involved with with um, you know the freedom of traveling with a friend cross country I know there's all these other things that they were smuggling coke and whatever, but just the, the vision of two guys traveling on, on choppers and cruiser style bikes across America. And then that scene by the campfire, you know, just your sleeping bags, your motorcycles and a campfire and three guys. It's a pretty cool vision and it's a pretty cool um, way to enjoy your own free time. So from that movie, I decided, okay, I'm gonna make the jump to a cruiser. But, you know, once I went into Harley, I saw that much less the new Harleys, but even the used Harleys were out of my price range. And so that was on Bartels here in Venice on Lincoln Boulevard. So right across the street, you had KTM. And they had Honda and Kawasaki's. So I go in there and I'm, I'm thinking classic, you know, cruiser, something that emulates early, early cruiser Harleys. So I'm looking at the Kawasaki Vulcan Classic. It's got the full full fenders and you know the highway lights and it's got that look. But then the salesman came up to me and said, well, yeah, it's a good bike, but tell me about yourself. What kind of riding are you used to? What have you been doing? So when I shared with him that I spent all my life riding sport bikes and it was considerable, a couple of decades, he said, I, I wouldn't recommend this. Now, I think in retrospect, it would have been fine. I would have adjusted um, in, you know, a few months, three months, maybe four months at most. But he made a good point. He was saying, okay, look, you're going to be jumping up several hundred pounds in weight. And you're going to be having like half the braking capabilities of the bikes you're used to. So that was a good point. And then he also threw in this Kawasaki, this Kawasaki Mean Streak. Vulcan Mean Streak, so it's still in the line of Kawasaki Vulcans, but it's the Mean Streak, and it was 2000, and that was supposed to be the year they came out with that term Muscle Cruiser, because a lot of these other metric motorcycles were also kind of trying to make these more high-performance cruisers. So you had a, you still had a good lean angle because you had pegs, you had um, dual disc brakes up front off the 900 Ninja. So you had a, a lot of these components that could really give you um, higher performance. It was shaft drive. I did stage one with a Cobra two into one, threw on some floorboards to give it more of that cruiser classic look. And I just really love that bike. But almost immediately I started getting that, oh, and I used to take that bike out to Whiskey Pete's and play some blackjack. Um, that was, uh, I did at least three or four times on that motorcycle, but you know, I mean, I remember a few times people yelling at me, like from old trucks and stuff, you know, get a real motorcycle, get a Harley, you know, and it, it really did kind of make me think, gosh, maybe I shouldn't have bought a metric, you know, and then Harley riders went way back, you know, you can pretty much tell if it's a metric. And so there was that little bit of negativity to deal with, and then it really hit home when I took it down to, uh, sorry you guys, I got cut off with a phone call, but, um, and it was my mother, so she'll probably call again and cut this video off, <laughs> but um, uh, where was I? 
Okay, so I took it down to Julian and I was sitting in this outdoor cafe, a stone's throw from my motorcycle and I'd see all these people stop to admire it. You know, this town's known for being a destination for motorcycles, mainly cruiser style motorcycles. So you'd have a lot of people that are on their Harleys walking by and they'd stop and, you know, it was a gorgeous bike and it was pretty new, so it's eye candy. They'd stop to admire it and right away they'd say, oh, it's not a Harley, it's not American. And then two, they would notice the full face helmet and say, I don't see how anyone could ride, you know, a cruiser style bike with a full face helmet. And I, I pretty much everyone I passed that day, I think it was in 2000, I was the only guy on a cruiser wearing a full face helmet. So that's really changed too, along with the perception of these metric motorcycles. Um, so, you know, when I got that motorcycle, I always kind of knew I was gonna gravitate towards a Harley Cruiser. Um, but it was nice to have that option of a metric to get into the cruiser um, scene and the cruiser bikes without having to go full bore, you know, and sell your first child or something to be able to afford the motorcycle. So I think it's just wonderful. You know, I'm not gonna go into all the, the, the differences, you know, between standard and metric because you guys, I think you know what they are. Um, you know, there is some good reasons why we pay more for Harley, but then if you're really just looking to get a new cruiser and you don't have much money and you're only gonna be maybe owning it for, you know, four or five, six years, it's a very, very good option. I think one, one motorcycle that really helped move that perception more towards where we are now was the, um, Yamaha Royal Star. I could be wrong on the name, I'm pretty positive. But it had the full fenders. So a lot of guys, customizers, would buy that so that they could get a cheap foundation for all the mods they wanted to throw on. And you, saw, you had a lot of guys really decking those things out and making them look gorgeous to where you really can't tell if it's metric or not. All you know is you have a cruiser style motorcycle that someone's dumped thousands of dollars into. So if you're gonna do that and you're on a budget, you know, it's a lot nicer to, to get into a brand new cruiser for $6,000 less so that you got that 6,000 extra to be able to play around with all these modifications that you're gonna do. So, um, you know, I think that the key thing is, is just being um, accepting of people riding on two wheels any way they want to do it and that's i think where we're going in, in perceptions and that's um you know we're leading away from the opposite of that you know where we really judge people um according to what brand they they drive you know and so i i think that's great you know that we can just see ourselves more as one big community that enjoys riding you know even you know there's so many different types now Back when I was um, first getting started, you kind of just had sport bikes and cruisers. But now you have, um, well, you had Enduros too, but the Enduros weren't very good for off-road back in those days. But anyways, you guys, that's my two cents on how the perception of these Metro Cruisers has changed for the better. So you can go get one and be accepted more by, by other riders these days. And I think that's cool because who needs to be arrogant? Who needs to think they're better than someone else simply by the brand of motorcycle that they ride? So God bless everyone. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've ever had a Metro Cruiser or if you've always shied away from them. But my experience with that Kawasaki Mean Streak was I really enjoyed it. You know, you've heard me say some things about Metro Cruisers, more plastic and things like that. But you know what? I was able to afford it. I really enjoyed it. And that's, that's pretty important and things right there. So thanks a lot, you guys. Leave a comment, hit like. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that too. And I'll be talking to you guys later.